Well done guys, you've made it to day seven of the how to lose a client in seven days, seven day challenge. Um, I know that sometimes these challenges are hard um, to uh, get them done in seven days, um, but hopefully you've managed to make it through um, all seven days of this challenge. Hopefully it's some of the best material which I've got to, um, or some, some of the best tools which I've got to deliver. Um, and you've managed to pick up, what I do always say to people with the seven day challenges is, so long as you've got something out of one or two or three of the days, like you don't have to get something, uh, like have a massive breakthrough over all seven days. That's why there are seven days there with seven different messages because um, they you'll get something, everybody will get something different out of each one of the, the seven Seven days. So we've gone through um, uh, why you would want to lose a client in seven days. We've gone through like how to manage your capacity through pricing. We've gone through um, how to um, identify which clients are a pain in the ass. Just saying no to clients. Um, you've seen the production line and hopefully you've just seen the uh, day six which was all, all about generating word of mouth um, within your business. But now that we've got all of the um, nuts and bolts tightened up within our business, and we've got a roster full of the perfect clients and we're full and somebody else comes along and says, um, we'd like to work with you. Well, first and foremost, it is okay to have a waiting list. Sometimes we get a bit of um, panic kind of set in. So this is a mindset thing. And it, again, it's just that time-based element thing. Oh, I'm so busy, but I've got all these other people I can service. Is that lost opportunities? Well, no, because if your business is working for you and you've got some really low um, clients in there, like work with those clients, see them out until you've serviced them uh, to the best of their possible ability. Um, it could be that um, um, maybe maybe you aren't charging quite enough and maybe, maybe you could be charging a little bit more money. Um, and it could be just a matter of just subtly putting your prices up by 10% or something like that. And then you'll start to see which clients value your services and which ones don't. Um, but ultimately, I think we shouldn't be looking to change anything that isn't broken here. If your client roster is full, um, like celebrate, like why not? Um, and I've driven, I've actually drawn a cup here and, uh, or a mug, a glass of water, which is, is full up. And what I say to a lot of people is don't get caught in the trap of just being busy delivering your product or service to, to your existing client base. Because at some point, that mug, cup, whatever, glass is gonna start emptying out. Clients will eventually start to drift away. And you have to start planning for that right now. So you kind of almost have to go back to the start, start looking at your marketing strategies, start looking at how you're engaging clients, getting out there and networking and things like that, and building up that waiting list. And make sure you manage expectations. So if a client comes in and you know it takes three months on average for a space to come available, and your clients say, look, I've got a waiting list of three months, but there is maybe some work which we can do in between. What you could do is start to create assets for your business. So you could start to create um, helpful videos, um, PDF downloads, like get all of your knowledge down into a book or something like that and say, look, my waiting list is three months, but if you go and read this book, that'll give you most of 80% of the knowledge and then I can help you activate it in three months. So you're not leaving them hanging for three months, you've actually given them an extra touch point. Um, so what I always say is like, just keep on delivering value all of the time. Even if you can't help them immediately, there will be some way that you can deliver some value to them over time so you can keep on nurturing that, that relationship some people talk about like um, tell people you're full even when you're not because it makes you look good and I think that's bullshit we don't need to lie um, but and, and it's absolutely fine to have a waiting list um, when we get there um, also um, it could be a, a chance an opportunity to look at how you're productizing your services because it could be that if you're full up and you've got a waiting list there's a lot of your knowledge um, intellectual property, your ideas, which could help even more people. So write it down and start finding new and creative ways of delivering that content to people, like I said before. But then alongside that, so there's your asset, how are we gonna draw an income from this um, and try and create some kind of a product that complements what it is that you're already doing. Because um, it could just be maybe an e-learning prog program, for example. Um, they're a very difficult sell, but if you've got enough people coming in through your kind of funnels and your, um, your business, giving them something else to kind of get stuck into, like a bit like a, done, done, um, a DIY service, do-it-yourself service, or a done-with-you service, maybe you could create a, an evening course or a group coaching program or an accelerator program, or um, maybe, maybe you 
need to pull in an extra member of staff, transfer your intellectual property from you into somebody else and get them to start delivering what you're doing. Um, there's some very scary decisions which have to be made at this point when you start having to be really innovative and um, start to spend money within your business. But what tends to happen is businesses don't just grow, as we know, sort of in a straight line like that. They tend to grow like this. They go up and down. And these, the key thing to remember is that these areas here, here and here are all areas where we have to invest in our business. Financially, with time, with people, uh, with premises or whatever it might be. You have to at some point be willing to risk a little bit in order to make the next big leap from here across to here. Otherwise, you'll be like a marble and you'll just end up swinging in this pendulum in this period here where you should be investing and you're not because you're not brave enough. So this is a point where I would ask you to be a little bit more brave. So that is the end of the seven days, how to lose a client in seven day challenge. Um, don't forget to go and download the workbook. And um, for this particular seven day, uh, <laughs> So don't forget to go and download the worksheet and make sure you've got, if you leave any comments or questions in the Facebook group, um, I'll make sure that I reply to them. And um, I look forward to seeing you on the next seven day challenge.